getting ready to go here. What I'm going to do today is starting out here in Tulare, California again and got to make a drop off near here and then head to Southern California. I got to have my driver's license renewed. Don't you love going to the DMV? So we're going to do that today, see how that goes, as well as who knows what happens in between now and then. Good morning everybody, this is Indiana Jack and we're going to start rolling right now. trucks. At least I think some other guy went and got on the scale over there. So I'm not sure. Well, I didn't have to wait in line back there. So we jumped way ahead and I'm on the scale now. I got weighed. Now we're going to get unloaded. Those trucks that I was behind right there, they're bringing corn in, but it, it's uh, got to be tested. So that's why they're waiting. So, didn't have to wait behind all those. The rain adds just an element of a distraction of just about anything, you know. I mean, obviously not snow, ice, that kind of thing, but rain just adds another thing that makes trying to back into a dock a little bit more difficult just because of the mud and the water and the... And, uh, just the other things that are going on, but rain is never a trucker's friend. All right, we're good just until they open. They're gonna open at eight o'clock, so time to just kick back for a bit. Oh man, it took them three hours to load, unload. So let's get out of this place. See how nice and sunny it is now? Uh, that's trucking. So we're gonna roll over to Pilot, get something to eat. Man, I'm starving. And then we'll head to Fresno, make a pickup there. And then we'll, I thought I was gonna make it to Southern California today, but it doesn't look like it since it's almost noon. So I got here at 7 a.m., so it's actually been longer. Well, five hours total, but technically they didn't open till eight o'clock, so. is one of two or three truck stops on 99 other than Ripon. You got the TA, you got the Pilot, and now the new Loves. 
so it's really busy. Oh, and the Flying J up in Bakersfield. I would venture to say all these guys are coming in for lunch. I know I always say that, but six of the uh, fuel islands are down. Well, that's all right. I don't need fuel, so actually all the fuel islands are down. Now, I'm not being negative. That's just, that's just what happened. I'll bet you the pumps are out, or they don't have fuel, or who knows what. Uh-oh, what's this guy doing? turn in the middle of the road. Uh -huh. You guys wait here. And I'll run in and get something quick. How about that? <laughs> We're about to arrive at our shipper here in Metropolis of Fresno, California. And traditionally when I've come here in the past, it's been a true drop and hook. Situation. Hopefully it will be this time. Although I have done live loads here and that's because I was early. I'm always early so if I'm too early then sometimes I get stuck waiting and that's alright. make or warehouse little things for Walmart like paper towels, paper plates, forks, you know, plastic forks, just kind of miscellaneous stuff. So they're usually nice and light. It took them three hours. So now we'll try to get in a little bit of driving. Today is just one of those days that was just a waiting around day. So I spent four or five hours at the other place and three hours at this place. So let's hopefully we can get some driving in now. Yeah, every once in a while you run into a day like today where you're just sitting pretty much the whole day. And waiting and waiting for a JB Hunt who's trying to do a blindside backing.
Dann If, when I'm in her position of you know, somebody waiting, like me waiting for her. I'm in the same way. I don't, I don't like somebody to be waiting for me. So I fully could understand why she just waited until I moved. I would have done the same thing. Just gonna make sure I locked my tandems. Because, Yeah, you just don't want to get out on the freeway and have the, uh, the rear tires fly out the back. I saw that happen once. I don't know if the guy forgot to put his pins back or what. He put on his brakes. The whole rear assembly went out the back. I didn't actually see it happen, but I came upon it after his rear end was sitting down like this and his tires were about 50 feet behind him. I don't know how it happened. It was in Texas. And off we go to, uh, you know, everything's changed. Like in trucking, like I always tell you, just from this morning, everything's changed what I'm doing now. I was going to try to get my driver's license today, but I'm going to go ahead and do this load, drop it off in Phoenix, and then come back to California and get service and do my driver's license. As of right now, that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> well, we're in Bakersfield, California. Didn't make it too far last night. So we're going to continue on this morning on our way to Phoenix. Cajon Pass. Coming down into San Bernardino, California. Traffic is light today. As we come down the famous Cajon Pass. It's really, there's really nothing to it if you're light. And really nothing to it if you're heavy, as long as you're, you've got the right gears and a good jake brake. The interesting thing about Cajon Pass, which I don't think anybody studies it, except for geologists and people who like odd information like me, you're actually going through the San Andreas Fault. All the interesting rock formations and things that you see in the Cajon Pass and right around there are a result of the San Andreas Fault. 
The fault then runs along what's called Pear Blossom Highway through Palmdale, which is the back side of LA. And then from there it goes up and then crosses the five just above Castaic Lake. And then it goes up north from there. So if you, oh, here's a swift, I'm doing 48. And there's a Swift doing, uh, he's got to be going 52. Which is odd for a Swift to be going that fast. Because, man, the CHP in this area, they're all over us. See, he's empty though, so I don't know why he's going so fast. We'll flash him over if he knows what that means. Another thing famous for the Cajon Pass, other than its great uh, grade, is the trains that run through here. All the trains from LA that are going to Chicago and north and east. If they don't run out through uh, Palm Springs, the major lines run up the Cajon Pass. So a lot of people who are train spotters, which are people out there looking for trains, they lined up along these train tracks around here looking at trains going up and down the Cajon Pass. See the lights you see straight ahead on that yellow wind sign? They're not blinking, which means no desert storms from here to Blythe anyway. I get more messages from especially retired truckers and disabled truckers that love to see the truck stops. So there's all some kind of fetish we all have with truck stops. I think because it brings back memories, that's, that's the biggest thing for, for those guys.
And of course that last one, I thought there was a yellow band around both of these. One guy asked me uh, why I always stop before I go under the awning. And I'll tell you guys again, because in electronic logs, the satellite can't get out underneath that awning. So I have to go on line one before I go underneath that awning. Otherwise, it's going to put me on line four. I don't want to be on line four here. So that's an explanation for that. Now we can go under because the sa satellite acknowledged that it got the message that I'm going on line one. Indio, California. You know, recently I did a film on tabletop trucking and I failed to mention for most of us the tabletop is right on our dashboard. Usually a sandwich sitting there so that we can eat it on the run. My favorite, honest to goodness, I swear, is a TA meatloaf sandwich. It's kind of like a fake meatloaf. I don't know what the ingredients is. I'm sure that it's not real meat, but it's a really good sandwich. You might want to try it. It's always at the TA and most Petros. It's called a meatloaf and ketchup sandwich. You know, there's a long-standing debate between Canada and the United States about a certain coffee company. And I'll tell you, the debate is not between Tim Hortons and Starbucks. I think we know that. The debate and the competition between the two coffee companies, Tim Hortons from the north and our friends in Canada, is not Starbucks. Their competition is Dunkin' Donuts. Look, if you go into a Tim Hortons, they have great coffee, no question. But they also have great donuts, sandwiches, fake frappuccinos. It's a great store and their coffee is top notch. But you go into a Dunkin' Donuts, it's very similar in the way that it's laid out and the products that they have. And the coffee is similar, like if you were to put down a cup of Tim Hortons and a cup of Dunkin Donuts, ah, I would have a hard time choosing which one I like best, so I say they were equal. Now, Starbucks is in a category all by itself. It's hard to explain. Um, it, is, it has that bitter taste. Only people that like really, really strong coffee like Starbucks. But here's something that I will have to defend Starbucks about, okay? Frappuccinos. There is no Frappuccino on the earth that tastes like a Frappuccino. You got that bitter taste of the coffee mixed in with the ice and the other syrups and things like that that make a frappuccino taste like it does, you can't match that. All of the other stores, they have fake frappuccinos. McDonald's has a fake frappuccino. Tim Hortons has a fake frappuccino. I used to go up there all the time and I would get them because I couldn't find a Starbucks to take my truck to. And I haven't tasted the Dunkin' Donuts frappuccino, fake frappuccino, so I really don't know there. But as far as I'm concerned, that settles it. The two top are Tim Hortons and Dunkin' Donuts. That's the real competition. But Tim Hortons is only in Ohio in the United States. There might be some other places that they have Tim Hortons that I don't know about, but I see their stores in as I go through Ohio and definitely top notch. All right, we gotta get out of this place. This whole line of trucks here, they're all taking their 30 minute break, just sitting there. Just twiddling their thumbs, kind of like what I was doing. What a waste. I hope you hate truck groups are happy 
because you made us have to sit and take our 30 minute afternoon naps. I don't understand where our country's going. day it is. Looks like the cops got somebody over there on the left hand side. Man, I can't believe they had him stop right there. I was a homeless man like that guy. I, he's in the right place. I definitely wouldn't want to be homeless and be like on the East Coast where it's five below zero right now. And our next thing to be concerned about is the scale. I'm so light though, I can't imagine getting called into it, but I might. The only thing I have wrong with my truck is I have a air leak. Let me tell you this quick story. I've been having this air leak problem. And every time I'd go look for it, I couldn't find it. Took it into a couple shops. No one could find it. So I met up with a buddy of mine out in the middle of the desert. And I had told him about the problem a couple weeks ago. So wouldn't you know, right, right when we stopped, his name is Garth. He, I said, Garth, come over here, listen, I can finally hear where, you know, the, you know, it's, it's making the hissing sound. Man, he just crawled under my truck. He found it right away. It was, it's part of my airbag is uh, dry rotting around the bottom of it. And not, not many people are willing to do what he did. Not that it was even a big deal, but to me it was. off our trailer here and uh, the number one question I'd say that I get on Facebook at is why do I have to go around searching for empties well this is a perfect example of that and I wanted to show you I'm dropping off this loaded trailer here and now I don't have a trailer so I'm just my cab which is called a bobtail this is for those of you who always ask the questions, not for you truckers that already know what it is that, that I'm doing. So now I'm dropping off this loaded trailer here so that I don't have to sit and wait for them to empty it. And now I have to go around to try to find an empty trailer. So that's why, that's the answer that you guys ask me in my emails. I'm actually showing you what the reason that I need to go around and find an empty trailer. Well, it's pretty simple here. Simple in the in the sense that they either have one or they don't. So we will go searching for an empty. If they don't have one, then I'm not going to go to try to find one tonight. It's too hectic to do that. Plus, it's to my benefit not to have an empty, especially in Phoenix, because there's no parking. So, it's just easier with a bobtail to 
try to find a place to park in Phoenix is almost impossible. So half of me wants to find one and half of me doesn't. <laughs> but you can be rest assured in the morning when I don't have an empty and I have to drive around to 50 places, then I will be saying, dang, why didn't they have an empty? This is their boneyard of empties. Trailers that have been emptied and now they're just waiting for carriers to come pick them up. Man, if I were Swift or Heartland Express, there's hundreds of them here. I'd really like to thank you personally for riding along with me and I've always said you know that trucking really is an adventure and you guys have been on a lot of adventures with me and I really appreciate that. If you could take a minute and go to my um, YouTube page and click subscribe on there so that every time I put out a film it'll come right to your email box and you'll know that there's a new one out. Also if you go to facebook.com forward slash Indiana Jack and like my page there. Every time I have a new one there you'll get a notification as well as a lot of talking about trucks and all of the things that I do on a moment by moment basis basis. So thanks for riding along with me like I said trucking's an adventure and we are always trucking. We'll see you on the next trucking adventure.